to better understand the global tax deal and what challenges face and what uh, changes the multinational companies could see, I'm joined by John Quelch from the University of Miami. John is dean at the Herbert Business School there. John, always good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Okay, let's get right to it. Let's begin with a little 101. How did we get here? What is it? And why is the EU pushing for a need for global minimum tax? Well, many people for many years have been pushing for a global minimum tax because obviously corporations do their best to uh, manage uh, their profits into uh, lower tax jurisdictions. And uh, this particular trend uh, has really been magnified by the tech companies who don't have to put up manufacturing plants, of course, in particular country locations. Uh, they are using... Uh, using virtual communication to uh, deliver their services uh, to consumers all over the world uh, without having to invest in a physical plant in particular jurisdictions. And so as a result, they've been able to do even more uh, to gather their profits in low tax jurisdictions than traditional multinational corporations with uh, manufacturing and distribution assets in individual countries. Right, John, I like the term manage profits from corporations. I think a lot of people would say evade paying taxes. Now, Poland has certainly isolated itself, and it begs the question, from Poland's standpoint, how much of this pushback is economic, and how much of it, of it do you think is based in politics? Well, I think it's uh, actually a little bit more political than it is uh, uh, economic. I mean, 26 out of 27 EU countries have now come on board uh, with the French proposal. Um, there are two elements to the proposal. One is the minimum uh, tax on profits of 15 percent. Uh, but the second is that the profits should be taxed in countries according to where the sales of goods and services of a particular corporation are distributed. And uh, in the uh, statements from the Polish uh, ministry, um, the contention is that these two are not significantly and tightly enough linked uh, for Poland's satisfaction. Uh, but I think there's a little bit of politics going on here, as your lead suggested. Uh, there are disputes that uh, the Polish government has with the EU commissioners in Brussels regarding uh, their uh, jurisdiction over uh, national uh, rules, which they think uh, should not be uh, impeded or constrained by uh, EU regulation. Let's talk about the many countries in the EU supporting the measure. How, how do they bring Poland into the fold, plain and simply? Well, I think, I think uh, Poland is actually in a, a pretty good position at this point in the sense that uh, it is obviously bearing the brunt of uh, refugee influx from Ukraine. Uh, and that gives Poland, uh, from a political point of view at this juncture, uh, a certain amount of uh, dignity, if you will, and leverage within the EU. Uh, so my, my belief is that uh, the motivations of the, uh, the French who are leading this effort um, are such that they will figure out a way to bring Poland on board. Right. In the last month, they did bring on board three other holdout countries, uh, Estonia, Malta, and Sweden, uh, they were successfully brought on board. And I think the Poles are just holding out for, uh, you know, one extra uh, carrot. Gotcha. And leading up to you also, we talked about the economic growth in Spain being pared back, as well as production costs going up in Germany. There's so much going on around the world, pandemic, inflation, China, U.S. tariffs, and of course, the full-blown fighting in Ukraine. To what degree are these outside influences impacting the timing of such a measure? I think they make it actually a little bit uh, more difficult in the sense that anything that constrains economic uh, growth and free trade uh, at a time of uh, uncertainty um, is going to run into uh, trouble. But this, this train left the station uh, when times were good several years ago, right. and uh, I think it's finally coming to uh, fruition now. Um, you know, I think that uh, another way of looking at it is that EU governments are facing um, a difficult dependency ratio situation with the aging of their populations. Those aging populations demand more benefits uh, relative to the number of uh, um, productive workers in the uh, in the economies, 
and as a result, they do need tax revenues uh, in order to cover those benefits. And so this is a very important motive, I think, for wanting to claw back uh, profits from these uh, multinational companies. And of course, it started with the U.S. Right. tech multinationals, but has now extended to uh, many other companies as well.